Good morning, and thank you for joining me on the Path to Liberty. This is the Fast Friday edition of the show for August 30th, 2019. Now, today we are talking about natural rights. This is something that's so incredibly important that Thomas Paine basically said getting it wrong or neglecting it is what leads to corruption in government. First of all, my name is Michael Bolden. We broadcast live every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time from here in my home office and studio in downtown Los Angeles for the 10th Amendment Center. A quick note, we will not have a live broadcast on Monday during Labor Day, but we'll be back to our regular schedule after that. We have video version and a podcast edition all of our archives, show notes, links to stuff I reference in the shows over on our website over at 10 amendmentcentercom slash path to liberty, all spelled out, 10 amendmentcentercom slash path to liberty. I'm really grateful for you spending a few minutes of your time today with me. And since it's the Fast Friday edition of the show, I'm going to try to knock it out, not take a, too much of your time in about mm, 10 minutes or so. Let's see what we can do. This is really important stuff. But I've got a major, major pet peeve with people referring to rights by amendment number rather than the right itself. And I've got a couple of examples that I want to share with you so you know what I'm talking about. And hopefully I'll make sense as to why I think this is an issue. First of all, over at the ACLU, and all these links will be in the show notes. I publish them generally shortly, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes after the live broadcast is done. So here, ACLU, this is their position paper on freedom of expression. They put it this way, quote, especially during times of national stress, like war abroad or social appeal at home, people exercising their First Amendment rights have been censored, fined, and even jailed. And this is a pretty true statement, except I don't like the fact that they're saying First Amendment rights rather than right to free speech, for example. But it's not just the First Amendment we hear this about. For example, the Fourth Amendment. And here's an organization that I respect a lot. Uh, we've partnered with on various issues. I use them. I uh, reference them in the show all the time on issues of privacy and surveillance. And here from a, a blog last year, and this is commonly on their site, quote, your Fourth Amendment rights shouldn't come with terms and conditions. So First Amendment rights, Fourth Amendment rights, these are common phrases. And even here at the 10th, at the 10th Amendment Center, we hear 10th Amendment rights here. For example, uh, this is a column from Chuck Norris back in 2010, it looks like, 2010, where he basically endorses us which is, I think, pretty awesome. He puts it this way, though. I would encourage you to go to the 10th Amendment Center and learn more about your 10th Amendment rights and then fight for those rights by holding all your representatives accountable to them. I'm sure there's some great Chuck Norris jokes that we could make about that. I mean, it's pretty awesome that he said that and linked to us, but I find it interesting and incorrect to refer to this as 10th Amendment rights. And whether it's 10th Amendment rights or First Amendment rights or Fourth Amendment rights or any other amendment rights, using that phrase really implies that you get your rights as a grant from government, a gift from government, or you get them from a document rather than having them pre-existing government or that document. And people who hear these phrases really learn that those rights exist because they're in the Bill of Rights rather than already having them and the Bill of Rights reaffirming them. Some people think that, uh, you know, maybe that means it's up to the courts to provide reasonable boundaries or common sense restrictions on those particular rights. And some might believe that those rights never even existed. They were basically privileges. And I would say that nothing could be further from the truth, and I hold the vision of the founders along the same lines. I don't think there were any founders that referred to people's rights by amendment number. It just wasn't the way they talked about rights. In fact, they used the term natural rights to refer to rights rather than being like, oh, I got this from a document, for example. And that's the way uh, John Dickinson, the penman of the revolution, he summed it up like that basically in 1776. He put it this way, quote, let me pull this up on the screen. Our liberties do not come from charters, for these are only the declaration 
of pre-existing rights. The rights already existed and in the charter, whether a constitution or a bill of rights, these are a declaration of rights that had already existed, for example. Now, I'm talking about First Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Tenth Amendment rights, people using these in ways that I disagree with. But I think the most common usage is when it comes to the right to keep and bear arms. We hear this all the time, or at least I do in my work here at the TAC. And an example just from a couple of weeks ago from the NRAILA.org website, that's their Institute for Legislative Action, they put it this way, quote, we're focused on protecting the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding Americans. Now, that's kind of a twofer, and I think it's probably a whole other show here at some point, but it implies not only that the rights come from the Second Amendment and that the only people who deserve to have them defended are those who uh, abide by the law, the, the myriad of laws, most of which shouldn't exist, and then you can have your rights defended by the NRA. But uh, there they are calling the right to keep and bear arms Second Amendment rights. But I think we all have seen some version of this. And in fact, if you're on social media, you'll see people post memes all the time, basically saying the Constitution is my gun permit or the only gun permit I need was signed in 1791, basically referring to the Second Amendment. And Mike Meharry wrote an article on this a few years ago talking about the notion of referring to the Constitution as your gun permit and therefore getting the phrase constitutional carry to refer to permitless carry legislation. And he puts it this way, quote, while I fully support the idea of permitless concealed carry, this insistence that the Second Amendment counts as some kind of gun permit makes me want to stab an ice pick through my eardrum. It, <laughs> I mean, let's be emphatic about it. So he absolutely can't stand it. And I absolutely can't stand it either. When people refer to their natural right to keep and bear arms, as their Second Amendment rights. And he goes on and he talks about how this fundamentally misrepresents the purpose of the Second Amendment. And he says, the first problem with this Second Amendment is my gun permit mantra lies in the fact that it implies that the amendment creates a right, that it didn't exist until it was in that document. People will say, well, other countries don't have a Second Amendment. Well, they don't have a restriction on government, but everyone, by the nature of being a human being, has a right to defend themselves, their property, their family, and the like. And Mike points out that the Second Amendment does not, quote, give you the right to keep and bear arms. Now, I mentioned John Dickinson, the penman of the revolution, but he was far from alone. Basically, all of the founders referred to our rights as natural rights. Here's Luther Martin. And he put it this way in 1787, quote, the first principle of government is founded on the natural right of individuals and in perfect equality. Or for example, this one, Theophilus Parsons in the Massachusetts Ratifying Convention. He is one of the leading lawyers of the time in Massachusetts and was a strong supporter of ratification of the Constitution. People, when he spoke, people really, really listened. But most people don't know him today, but I like citing him a lot because he had a lot of good things to say. So for this, for example, quote, no power was given to Congress to infringe on any one of the natural rights of the people. Or if you listen to me talk pretty regularly, I'll often cite Thomas Jefferson in this kind of line of thought. And he said it this way, a free people claim their rights as derived from the laws of nature and not as the gift of their chief magistrate. Again, rights come from nature. They are natural rights and they are not gifts from government. The short version. Referring to your rights by amendment number, I believe, encourages other people to treat them like privileges. And privileges are things that can be granted by government or taken away by government. So they refer to them this way. I think people see them as gifts from government and not what they really are, and that is natural rights. Now, Thomas Paine actually described them this way, quote, they are natural, imprescriptible, and inalienable. That's how he put it in The Rights of Man, his very famous work. I think it was like 1791. And these cover things like life, liberty, property, pursuit of happiness, and they are 
absolutely not a grant or a gift from government. Understanding this, as I mentioned right at the outset, I think is one of the most important things that we can do as we go through our learning process of understanding liberty, the role of government, and the like. And Thomas Paine put it this way, quote, ignorance, neglect, or contempt of human rights are the sole causes of public misfortunes and corruptions of government. Well, I hope you found this interesting, educational, enjoyable to watch. I really appreciate you spending a little time with me today. If you support the show, you can take some very free, very easy actions. Smash the like button, leave some comments, whether it's live or in the archive, subscribe, get bell notifications. If you're listening to a podcast, whatever platform, leave a review. That really, really helps out a lot. Basically, all of the platforms you may watch or listen on, they generally have algorithms, almost all of them. And when you take these actions, it basically triggers the algorithm into telling the platform to show the program to more people. So all of those things really help out a lot. And I really appreciate all of those uh, likes and comments and reviews that have been coming in. I really, really appreciate it. It helps us spread the word. Of course, if you want to support us financially, you can go to 10thamendmentcenter.com slash members as little as two bucks a month goes a long, long way here at the TAC. Again, thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your time with me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you have an awesome weekend, a long one, hopefully, like I'm going to take, and uh, I will see you next week here on the Path to Liberty.